you've got a baby and you're wondering if your bedtime routine is ideal. And we're going to talk about that today. Hey there, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm a sleep consultant and the founder of the Helping Baby Sleep Method. Today we're going to talk about what does your ideal bedtime look like? And it depends on your kiddo's age. We're going to talk about newborns, babies, and toddlers. But first, what is the purpose of a bedtime routine? The purpose is to have some closure time with your child and their favorite person, which is generally you, to have some winding down time in the room that they're going to be sleeping, and to cue up their brain that sleep is coming. We actually have numerous studies to show that a bedtime routine alone can improve your child's sleep. The study by Dr. Jody Mendel, a famous pediatric sleep researcher, in 2016 showed that implementing a consistent bedtime routine actually helped kids fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and have less night wakings. So definitely reasons to have a consistent bedtime routine for your child. We'll put the link to that study down here below if you want to take a look on yourself. So what should your ideal bedtime routine look like? So let's say you have a newborn. Okay, newborn sleep is highly irregular. They often aren't falling asleep until 9, 10 o'clock at night. Your bedtime routine does not need to be this long, drawn out event. A bedtime routine at this age might be giving them a bath. The purpose of the bath in the newborn stage is to mimic the conditions of the womb. It also increases your body temperature, which then helps your body temperature drop off, which actually creates the ideal condition to fall asleep, that lower body temperature. You might bring them into the place that they're going to be sleeping for the night. Dry them off, change the diaper, put on a sleep sack, swaddle them, maybe you're rocking, maybe you're feeding, you're helping them fall asleep. How long will that take? Well, those steps might take 15 minutes, uh, give or take with the bath. And then, you know, it's not uncommon in those early two months for it to take sometimes a half an hour to an hour to get your little one down at night. Some kids go easily. Some kids are a bit more fussy. They're tired. It's harder for them to fall asleep. They have weak regulation systems at that time. It will get better, especially after 10 to 12 weeks of age when that witching period, that kind of fussy period between six and nine, when they're tired and cranky and want to eat and sleep, starts to recede. Okay, so then babies, let's call babies four to about age two, okay? Babies still love bedtime routine. And bedtime routine looks like your nap time routine as well, with just a few extra steps. So bedtime routine for a four month old to, um, let's say 12 months might be that you come into the room, you change into their pajamas, you change diaper, you put them in a sleep sack, you dim the lights, you set the stage for sleep. Maybe you listen to a lullaby. We have research to show that music can help humans fall asleep more quickly, right? How can you set the stage for sleep? Then you're gonna to wanna to be reading a book or two books with them on your lap, having cuddle time with you. And then they'll be going down into the crib. How you get them down, that's completely up to you. In our Helping Baby Sleep class, we teach parents how to teach their kiddos to sleep independently, to be put down completely awake, and then can do some sort of self-soothing action to help themselves fall asleep. As kids get older, their bedtime routine will get a little bit longer. In that four to one year stage, that might be a 15 minute routine, okay? As they start to walk, things can get a little bit elongated, right? They start to have more opinions. 12, 14 months, they start to point at things. They have opinions. So then now your bedtime routine might be taking 20 to 30 minutes. And that might be coming into the room. Hey, do you want to wear pajama A or pajama B? Giving them little controlled choices because they're starting to exert their opinions on the world. Once you're in the room, stay in the room. So if you had to do bathroom things, you did those first. Now you're in the room. They get to choose their books. They're having cuddle time with you. We've got the lights dimmed a little bit. Maybe we're playing a little bit of music. We're setting the stage for sleep, having time with the parents, and then going into the crib or um, bed. Really bad. Most kids aren't ready to go to a bed until about two and a half years of age. Some of the common mistakes that I see are one, having a bedtime that's just too late. Often people base that on when somebody came home, what they think their ideal wake up time is. But you can take our um, top two things to help your baby sleep um, download and get a couple suggestions on timing in there for ages um, zero to two years of age. If your bedtime's too late, your child's already overtired and they want you that much more. 
The second common kind of things that can derail things is having too many people in the room. So often parents love to do it together. It's a beautiful thing. But two parents with all their attention on you can be stimulating rather than relaxing. So you could switch out, have one parent start and have the other parent finish. The other common thing I see is again, it's just too long. The bedtime routine takes too long. And that's sometime related to the idea that a parent has like an 8 p.m. bedtime in mind. In the helping baby sleep method, until kiddos are on one nap, somewhere around 15 months, generally teach that your bedtime should be based on when your kiddo woke up from their last nap. We use a rolling schedule. Usually it ends up that your bedtime falls in a window that may be a half an hour wide, but it's not the exact same time every night. Because let's say your child woke up early from your nap, you're gonna to wanna to put them down for bedtime slightly earlier to accommodate for that lost sleep time. I'm putting the link to my free download, Why Your Baby Struggles With Sleep, so you can download my four page ebook to learn some simple tips that you can implement tonight. And don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a baby sleep tip.